Listen, I would imagine a lot of people want to be in business with you, but it, has there been a project along the way that you haven't been able to get made for some reason? And if you could get the financing, you would love to make? Yes, like six or seven or eight. <laughs> which, which is the one that is like top of the list? Like if someone gave you the financing, this is the Maya, one I would make. Maya Lord. It's just a, a film about, you know, the only... Um, you know, a uh, conquistador who did the right thing. Do you have a script that's like ready to go? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, all, all there. I, I have won't, actually I like kind of figured out. You know, I mean, it's like everything is about tax rebates these days, and Mexico doesn't have a tax rebate, and that's like kind of holding off that project because you need the 25, 30 percent, you know, to make something affordable. I, I have, I've heard this from every filmmaker in every studio. Um, if, if someone has actually never seen any of your movies, what is the first one you want them starting with? Anonymous. Is there a reason? It's just like, and I think my best movie. Okay. Um, what do you think it is? You are very good at destroying our planet. People love watching end of the world TV shows, end of the world movies. What do you think it is about the genre that people love, keep like they keep coming back to it? I think it's like just uh, seeing, you know, our world destroyed is uh, some sort of, uh, uh, you know, I mean, when you look at the Bible, for example, that also ends with like a big destruction, you know? I mean, this is like kind of in us as, as humans that we like to see these kind of movies. And, uh, and yeah, that's like, and I think uh, that's the, there's something at the core of us, we kind of uh, like to see our world destroyed. When you are depicting what's happening with the moon and the science in the movie, how much are you sort of trying to make it as realistic as possible, but you also realize, fuck it, we're making a movie and we just have to have fun. Yeah, but you have to always, you know, I think you have to always uh, make it as, uh, some sort of correct as you can. I mean, scientifically correct as you can, because you cannot like just like throw stuff on the screen and uh, nobody believes in it anymore. So you go like out of your way to make it like kind of seem like uh, really happening, uh, but it's a totally fantastical story. Uh, I listen, the VFX in this movie have to look good or you're not going to believe anything. Thankfully, the VFX in this movie look good, um, especially the stuff inside the moon. And I'm just curious, could you talk a little bit about what were some of the shots that really you struggled with inside the superstructure? Well, it was like kind of mainly actually every shot with the anomaly or like the, the swarm, uh, you know, uh, that was like actually the hardest because we had uh with frame store uh doing everything outside the moon and with d neck everything inside the moon and we had to both have them like develop uh, a look for this thing and they have had totally a different you know uh kind of priority they call it always priority uh, uh techniques you know and they don't want to share them so you had to kind of some sort of figure out a way how to make this look the same that was like tough. Uh, I, I can't even imagine. Uh, John Bradley is very good in this movie at selling the conspiracy and the levity. He has to do a lot. What surprised you about working with him? Because he, he's very good in this. Well, first of all, he's the nicest man on earth. I mean, I have never, ever met anybody that like accommodating. And, and, and then he is uh, one of the best actors. I mean, it's, it's incredible what he makes out of the material and where he like adds a little choke. And he's, he's really, really a, a very, very accomplished. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, he's now like again in the next uh, David Benehoff uh, Vice uh, TV show. So it's like kind of his, he's, he's, he's really, really amazing. Uh, without getting into spoilers, um, the ending of this movie postulates somebody um, built the moon. Uh, and I'm just curious, did you always have that answer or did you debate who it might be? Like, how did, you know what I mean? 
Well, we always like kind of thought that we like have to go, um, that it has to be, you know, somebody who knows what they're doing, right? So it had to be a, a terribly advanced culture and uh, which had like kind of one terrible thing happening to them. And they kind of uh, kind of built these moons and they wanted to actually build many moons, but only one escaped the destruction. And, and that was like always for me, the, the story I wanted to tell. The end of the film has a character talking to another character. I'm not gonna reveal anything. And the, there's a line of dialogue saying something and it's sort of setting up what could be the next movie. When you write something like that, do you already have the answer or do you like sort of putting yourself in a corner and saying, he's gonna say that and we're gonna figure it out if we make another? No, we have like an idea what uh, should be the next part, but that naturally belongs uh, uh, Ask me after the opening <laughs> two, three weeks <laughs> right. if this will happen. <laughs> yeah, but when we spoke last time, you mentioned that at the beginning when you were first uh, coming up with this movie, that you thought of it as a trilogy. And then you were like, I don't even know if I want to make another one. Um, are you more inclined if it's a hit that you would want to make another? Well, you know, it's money. It's like uh, it's hard to kind of find money for movies these days. It's uh, when, you, when you're not like uh, inclined to do a, a Marvel or DC comic mo uh, a book movie because you, I grew up in Germany. Uh, we have not this culture, uh, you know, and uh, so, so it, it's, it's, it's hard to get any uh, money for a movie. So if there is like a possible two and uh, Moonfall two and three, I, I'm, I'm very much uh, looking forward to that because that's... Uh, it was probably a higher budget and um, and no more COVID. That was the worst. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, listen, I got to stop there, but I'm just going to say again, congrats on the movie. And I really look forward to talking to you further uh, this week at the screening. Okay.